What's going on, everyone? Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to the Tundra Dude 34 YouTube channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you know every time I put up a video and or a live stream, we would love to have you involved in all of it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, hello. Good to see you today. So I got an email from um, a viewer named Matt that I want to talk about with you a little bit. And we're going to kind of cover a couple things that he talked about in the email. Number one, we will see that he came from a Ford F-150 into a Tundra, which are always the videos I like to make. That is a very, very big one, especially for you, the consumer, uh, you know, or the owner of the Tundra. Anytime people come to the Toyota Tundra from another brand or leave the Toyota Tundra for another brand, I always like to hear the reason why, especially when they're coming from another brand into the Tundra. What made you come to the Tundra? Uh, what do you think about it? That kind of thing. Why would you leave the, the king of the half ton world the Ford F-150, stuff like that. So Matt wrote me an initial email here. I'm going to read it to you. But he also asked about cold air intakes. And I figured we can go over a couple things with that in case you are new to the Tundra or, you know, new to the automotive world and how you want to do some, you know, aftermarket upgrades. Basically, expectations with those cold air intakes just to put everybody on, a, you know, the same level playing field of what to expect. You can never expect too much. So we will go over all of that. So first, let's read the email from Matt. Okay, the email is titled, Switching Brands. Good afternoon. Wanted to say thank you for your channel on YouTube. Your videos helped me steer into trading my 2018 F-150 STX Super Cab in for a 2021 Tundra SR5 Crew Max in cement with the XP Gunner package. I wouldn't say I was brand loyal to Ford because I've owned a Silverado, I hated it, an F-150 and now a Tundra. The F-150 had several electrical problems in the engine that resulted in being in the shop four times in a span of 40,000 miles. I have always heard about the legendary reliability of the Tundra and decided to give it a shot. So far, this is the best truck I have ever owned. The power of the 5.7 greatly surpasses that of the 2.7 EcoBoost. The ride is surprisingly very smooth for a truck with all-terrain tires on it. I did have a question about adding a cold air intake to it. Would it help with fuel economy and power as much as they claim? Thanks in advance. All right, so I'm going to break down his email a little bit here. So the first thing he talked about is he traded in his 2018 F-150 STX for a 2021 Tundra SR5 Crew Max in cement. Cement, which is a lot of your favorite color out there. Um, so the 2018, and he said he had the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. So his 2018 STX, obviously we talk about um, you know, the Ford F-150 is always advancing their electronics and their trucks and everything like that. You know, they got the, the twin turbo V6 options out there. He had the 2.7. There's also the 3.5 EcoBoost. Um, there's a high output EcoBoost 3.5 available in the Raptor and another higher trim now. Um, and, you know, there's also the 5.0 Coyote V8. Now, direct comparison, Tundra has the 5.7 V8. He had the 2.7 EcoBoost. I actually have a little bit of experience with that 2.7 EcoBoost because my brother had that in his F-150, which I believe was a 2018 as well. Powerful motor, um, you know, as far as getting down the road, does the job. Doesn't sound like a truck engine at all. Uh, it's just something completely different. And with the next generation com uh, coming and the rumors of, you know, forced induction, small displacement V6 engine, that may be something we see in the future. But as far as that goes, um, him going from the 2018 F-150 to the 2021, he said... Uh, this is his favorite truck. Now, I love stuff like this. So first, we'll focus on that. This happens to a lot of people. I always feel like the Toyota Tundra doesn't really get a fair shake in the game because a lot of people won't even consider the Toyota Tundra uh, because of, well, a few things. Number one, a lot of people feel that they're not buying American when they buy a Toyota Tundra, even though the Toyota Tundra is made in the United States down in TMMTX in San Antonio, engineered, created, Everything right here, built by Americans in America. It's one of the most American-made trucks uh, of all the half tons, which is pretty funny. But a lot of people won't consider it because of the Toyota logo, uh, you know, on the front of the truck. So that's one thing. Number two, people always feel like, well, they never upgrade the truck, so I don't want anything to do with it. Um, you know, it, it hasn't seen a new generation in a very long time. But then I get these emails and these stories every once in a while. It's why I feel they're very important is the people like Matt here who do make the switch always say the same thing. It's the same trend. Every single email. This is the best truck I've ever owned. 
The 5.7 is very powerful. The truck gets down the road really nice. We hear it all the time. Go back through all my videos on people in the fan features uh, talking about their truck, talking about their switching brands. It's always that same line of, wow, this is the best truck I've ever owned. I wish I gave it a chance even earlier than today, that kind of thing. It's just one of those trucks that, yes, it's been around a long time. Yes, it doesn't have updates as much as some of the other half tons out there, but when people get behind the wheel of it, they're behind the wheel of maybe something a little old school, but it is a genuine truck. 5.7 liter V8. It's big, it's heavy, but the thing gets down the road real nice. I'm very sad to see the 5.7 liter V8 and the six speed go away in the next gen. That is something that um, I feel like, and I talked about this in yesterday's video, uh, my 2020, the 5.7 is ultra responsive versus some of the other Tundras that I've owned. I feel like it has to do with the recalibration they did after taking away the transmission cooler. Uh, and that six speed transmission works flawlessly with it. And I hate to see it go away, but anyone who gets behind the wheel of a Tundra always says the same thing. Wow, I didn't expect it to be this good. And a lot of people will go out and buy it. So that's the first thing he was talking about there, going from the 18 F-150 to the 2021 Tundra. Sounds like no regrets. Um, he absolutely loves what he got himself into, and it's the best truck he's ever owned with the 2021 Tundra there. Number two, and this is something that, again, we hear a lot when people are coming from the F-150, unfortunately. I'm going to read it here again. The F-150, mind you, it was a 2018 F-150, had several electrical problems in the engine that resulted in it being in the shop four times in a span of 40,000 miles. So in the shop for electrical issue four times. He is not the first F-150 owner that I've talked to that has had a newer F-150 that has been in the shop for electrical problems. I don't know if that's a common thing for them, but uh, to be in the shop four times under 40,000 miles. In today's day and age, 40,000 miles is still a fairly new truck, right? 2018 model year, um, 40,000 miles in a Tundra is like breaking it in barely, right? A lot of these Tundras can go up into the 250, 300,000 range and all you have to do is basic maintenance. And that is another thing when people come over to this truck. Although there's not there's not a lot of crazy stuff going on in it as far as electronics and features and everything, um, the truck is reliable. And it's a less is more approach for people who need a truck to get truck stuff done. But yeah, man, that's a lot of trips to the shop there. Uh, four times in 40,000 miles. You got to let me know in the comments what you think about that, especially if you're an F-150 owner. If any of this is resonating to you, please comment below. Um, but nobody's putting up with a truck, a brand new truck at that, going to the shop that many times. So I don't blame him for looking around. He did mention also he's not brand loyal. He came from a Chevy Silverado and then went to the F-150. And that's awesome. If you're somebody who isn't truly brand loyal, trying all of the different uh, brands out there is, you know, spice of life, variety. Uh, you know, you see what you like and what you dislike, but it seems like everyone who does that, at least the people I talk to, when they end up on the Tundra, they wish they went there before all of the other ones. All these trucks nowadays are fantastic. They all offer something and everybody's different in what they want, but it just seems like a lot of people end up loving the Tundra. And it's unfortunate that they don't talk about it more as far as advertising and stuff, because it still is a great truck. The best looking half ton, in my opinion, just saying. I love it. All right, so that is a few things. And then what was the other thing? Just real quick, we just talked about this, but the power of the 5.7 liter V8 greatly surpasses that of the 2.7 EcoBoost. Now, it, I told you I drove the Ford F-150 my brother had with the 2.7. Um, it's just a completely different feeling from the 5.7 liter V8. To be honest with you, no brand loyalty here whatsoever. When I was driving my brother's uh, 2.7 EcoBoost, didn't feel like I was driving a truck. It was real smooth, it was real quiet, and almost felt like an SUV. All right, when I drive the Tundra, the Tundra's heavy. It sways around, it's loud. It, that is what a truck is to me. All right, and I know we're going forward into the future. Um, we'll probably see the end of V8s in our lifetime, but I just love the current offering of the Tundra because I feel like it's one of the last trucks in the half ton market as far as the old school. Some things don't need to be changed. Um, and then we get down to, oh, he did say the ride is surprisingly very smooth for a truck with all-terrain tires. Um, in the suspensions that I've driven with the Tundra, there's some that I like, there's some that I don't like. The one that I didn't like was my father's 2018 Limited. It was not a TRD. It had the 20-inch wheels and the regular suspension. That, to me, felt a little bouncy. But any other suspension that I've driven from the Tundra has been really, really good and really smooth going down the road, especially that TRD Pro Fox suspension. And last but not least, we talk about the cold air intake here. 
Um, he wants to know if a cold air intake would help with fuel economy and power as much as they claim. All right, so I always like to talk about the cold air intakes and expectations. Your expectations with a cold air intake should be quite low. Don't go into it thinking you're going to get massive power gains and don't go into it thinking you're going to, um, you know, help your MPG. The Tundra is the Tundra, okay? It has not so great MPG and that's just the way it is with the truck. Maybe if you, you know, take your foot off the pedal a little bit and kind of, uh, you know, um, drive slow, don't mash the gas pedal going up through the gears. There's ways you could improve your fuel mileage a little bit here or there, but things like cold air intakes and stuff won't really help to the point where you'll notice it, I don't think, all right? The two reasons I always buy a cold air intake for are number one, for noise, all right? It gives a different sound to the engine bay a little bit. Number two, the look in the engine bay is pretty cool. As far as power delivery and everything like that, I always feel like um, there's a little bit more throttle response. And when you're going up through the gears, when the truck is getting up to speed, between second and third gear, it does have a little pull on it. Um, but nothing to, nothing more than a seam of your pants kind of feeling. Um, you're not going to get massive power gains. You got to think of it like this. So let's do an average price for a cold air intake. Say it's about 300 bucks. All right. The TRD is like over 400, but there's some that are 200. We'll just say 300 bucks for, for the, the talk we're having here. So for 300 bucks, some of these cold air intakes are claiming like a 20 to 30 horsepower gain. So 300 bucks, 20 to 30 horsepower gain. Think of that for a minute. Or you get a Magnuson supercharger that's claiming 150 horsepower gain but you're spending seven to eight grand. You see, it doesn't really make sense there. If you want real power gains or you want something that'll help your MPG, you're gonna need to do things like a tune for your truck, okay? So people will do this, they'll get a cold air intake, they'll get an exhaust, maybe some headers, and then they'll get the truck tuned. Um, and there's things like Pedal Commander and stuff out there, the box tunes that, you know, they have different settings for how you want the truck to be, you know, for MPG savings, uh, for you know the shift mapping and all that can change for you. There's ways to set the truck up like that. But if you want real horsepower gains, you're gonna have to spend real money. So basically for the cold air intake, just trying to help everyone before they spend the money, keep your expectations low, all right? Know that the part is going to give you more engine bay noise. It matches really well with a dual exhaust. It does really good things with that. Um, throttle response, a little bit more throttle response is there. Uh, but the horsepower gains aren't going to be super measurable like as you're driving. Oh, I feel the difference. I mean, you might have that placebo effect that we all love to have. Um, but really, what are we looking at when we think horsepower? Probably like 5 to 10 horsepower gain. And that'd probably be pretty much it. Um, so you got to watch out for those, uh, you know, claims out there that you're going to get massive horsepower. Just think of the price difference in what we just said between a cold air intake and a supercharger. If I could get that much of a horsepower gain spending that little money, why would I go spend... All of this money on a supercharger so keep that in mind just keep your expectations low and you will be happy with it also it makes the engine bay look great if you're someone who goes to truck shows car shows whatever and you pop open the hood on your truck that trd um, s and b intake there's a k and n they all look great it'll help your engine bay look kind of nice but just at the end of the day moral of the story with the cold air intakes keep expectations low all right so that is the video today ladies and gentlemen congratulations to matt for coming over to the toyota tundra and loving it if you are one of these fine people that have joined team tundra let us know in the comments below your pros and cons i'm always wanting to hear it don't be afraid to tell me why you left the Tundra because we always like to hear, you know, people coming in to the truck and on their way out. So feel free to comment below and let me know what you think. Matt, once again, thank you very much for sending in all your information. Very sorry you had four electrical problems in under 40,000 miles in a 2018. Um, I would have moved on to another brand as well, but that's just me. So what I'm going to do, we put up playlists. I'm going to put up two fun ones today. Number one, we're going to do the dealership walk playlist. So check that out. Every Sunday at this point, I'm going to dealerships around me, um, just checking out what they have and talking Tundra with you. It's always a good time, so check out those videos. The other one I'll put up is the 2021 Tundra playlist. Uh, you can see all the offerings that are out there right now. 2021 Tundras are very hard to find because of the part supplier issue. So if you have something specific you're looking for, now may be the time to buy. Go check out that playlist to check out everything that's offered for 2021. The packages, the pro colors, the trail edition, all the stuff that's different. Um, but make sure you comment below and let us know what you think about everything, uh, you know, with Matt's story there and anything else you would like to add. Feel free. We would love to hear from you. So until next time, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook at TundraDude34, TundraDude34 at gmail.com. You guys have a great day. Be safe and be well.